In this video, we are going to take a look at how to upsize your photos, how to make them bigger uh, using Photoshop and or Lightroom. I'll show you both because they actually do pretty much equally the same job as each other. It just depends which program you happen to be using at the time. Okay, folks, my name is Matt Kluskowski. Welcome to the latest tutorial. And I'm doing this because there's a lot of myths out there. Um, there's a lot of plugins out there that do it. And I think sometimes people think, well, if there's a plugin that does it, it's gotta be better than Photoshop. So I'm here to tell you Adobe is constantly improving this stuff. You don't need, they don't even tell you they're, they're doing it all the time and they are. And that if you use Photoshop and or Lightroom, you have great technology already built into there, okay? I don't think you need a plugin. I print all the time, I print big all the time. This is exactly what I use and it holds up great for my prints. I've tested some of those while I can see minute differences in some of the different plugins. It's not worth the hassle. It's not worth the hassle. It's not worth the time and the money to go do something else or use something else to get this job done. Cause I think Photoshop and Lightroom do a great job at it. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and dive in here. So uh, we'll start off inside of Photoshop and I've got an image open here. So what we're going to do is head to the image menu and go down to image size. Yes, it is that easy. All right, it's the same, the same menu item that's been there since almost the beginning of Photoshop. Um, this is where we would go to do it. And you can see the size of this image is 3,200 pixels on the long side, on the, on the width. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna upsize this. You've got a couple of different ways you can do it. You can do it based on pixels. You can do it based on inches. In my case, I'm just gonna choose pixels here as a demonstration and I'll do 8,000 pixels on the long side. All right, and because I have that little chain link turned on down there, that'll automatically adjust the height. The, the real trick in this one is to use the right resample method. And you can see that there's a little section down there that says resample and mine says preserve details 2.0. There are other ones inside of there. Their legacy, just like all software, the software companies tend not to remove um, features from their software. They tend to just keep adding, which is how we get more and more features. But you generally want Preserve Details 2.0 for upsizing, okay? Downsizing, I, I, whatever it's gonna choose, I, I, still, I, I think it'll still choose that. If you were to go in here and type in 2000 pixels, it's still gonna do that. But uh, downsizing is not generally a problem. It's usually upsizing where the computer has to add information where we risk that loss of quality and where all the math and everything that goes on behind the scenes uh, really makes a difference. Now, as a side note, if you don't see Preserve Details 2.0 listed inside of here. Um, it could be because you're using an older version of Photoshop, but this is a newer feature in the last couple of years. Uh, but what you'd want to do is as long as you're using the subscription version, you can go to your preferences, which would be under the edit menu on a PC and go down to technology previews. And there's a little checkbox in there that enables Preserve Details 2.0. Okay. And that's really the one that you'd want to use for upsizing your photos. So make sure that that's checked if for some reason <clears throat> you come in here and don't see it listed there. So I'm just going to go in there and I'm going to type in 8,000 pixels. I'm going to click OK, depending on the size of your computer, that can be just a couple seconds. Depends on how big you're upsizing it as well. Could be a couple seconds. It, it's, it's for a large, large upsize. It's, it's taken me a minute for, for that uh, little progress bar to go through there. But you can see as we zoom in here, I am zoomed into 100% and this is plenty, plenty sharp. This will hold up to a print, uh, any size print that I, I would normally print for this size of photo, I would not hesitate to print this knowing that based on viewing distances and all those things, this will be tack sharp, okay? All right, so that's the Photoshop way. Let's go ahead and dive into the Lightroom way to do this. But before I do that, Let's have a very quick word from our sponsor. And that is, uh, I would encourage you if you're interested to check out my Photoshop system. If you wanna learn more about Photoshop, um, I've put together this system for photographers. And what it does is my whole goal is to get you from beginner to solid intermediate level where you can go off on your own and you can start learning and understanding all these other tutorials. You'll have that foundation there. I think one of the biggest strengths of the Photoshop system is I cut out all the stuff that's non-photography, okay? Because Photoshop is this big. And if you try to learn it, it's a beast. 
But if you take out all the non-photography stuff, now you don't have a whole lot to, to contend with and it becomes a much easier program. Uh, there's a little sale going on on the, uh, on the webpage there. So I do hope you'll swing by the website and check that out. Okay, back to our tutorial here. Where we left off was I had done the Photoshop version and now I am gonna go jump into Lightroom to do this. So why would you ever do this in Lightroom? Simply if you weren't going to do it inside of Photoshop, if you weren't gonna use Photoshop. Um, if you're gonna use Photoshop, then I would just say when you're over there with the photo and you think you're gonna upsize it, go ahead and do it then. Um, if you don't and you forget and you have to do it over here inside of Lightroom, it's gonna be fine. But uh, we've got our photo open. You've of course do all your changes to it. And if you're at the point where you're gonna save this out as a JPEG, what you would do is come over here to the file menu, go down to export, get all your export settings as you normally would. I'll do file type JPEG. Um, the big part is gonna be under image sizing. All right, under image sizing, you can see here, I can resize this to fit and I can do specific width and height. There's all different ways to do the same thing. That's, that's all these are. They're, they're, they're different methods of, of a width and a height with just different names. They all get you to the same place, which is a different width and height. So I know in this case, I'll do the long edge of 8,000 pixels and it'll adjust accordingly the shorter edge to, to match whatever it would need to be. But I know I want at least 8,000 pixels on the long edge. I'll keep it at the resolution at 144 here. And then we'll go ahead and we can hit export. From there, it's gonna save that JPEG to your desktop. And so what I did is just for comparison's sake is I brought both of these into Photoshop and I layer them on top of each other. So I've got the Lightroom version at the bottom here and I've got the Photoshop version at the top here. So both of these were resized using the methods I just showed you to 8,000 pixels, all right? And then let's pixel peep. So I'll zoom in to 100% like so. And then we can turn off the top one. So now you're looking at the Lightroom resize version and then you're looking now at the Photoshop resize version. They're virtually the same. I mean, it, it's, it, it's pretty indistinguishable uh, which one is which from these two, okay? So they do a very, very similar job as each other. They use a lot of the same technology on the background. So if you're using Lightroom and you did need to save this out and increase the size of it, then you can go ahead and do that right there. If you do happen to be printing, one of the things uh, that I, I've got my photo listed here, and if I go under the rulers, grid, and guides section inside of Lightroom, and I turn on dimensions, I turn on show guides, and I turn on dimensions, that little checkbox there, all right? But you can't just do that, because it's telling me I, I set this up for a 22 by 17 print. The other thing you need to do is head into the print job section and you have to make sure print resolution is turned off for you to see what I'm gonna show you here. And that is Lightroom is telling me that if I wanna print this as a 22 by 17, it's gonna print it at 146 pixels per inch, okay? Honestly, I'd be okay with that. I know so many times you're told 300 pixels per inch, by all means, do your own test. I've done mine and I know I can get away with 150 plenty of times depending on the viewing distance of the print. But Lightroom's telling you it's gonna do it at 146, all right? And again, make sure print resolution is not checked here. It says print to printer and print resolution is not checked. That's when you're gonna see the PPI, the pixels per inch. What you can do here is if, you're, if you print this and you realize the quality is not up to your standard, is not what you want, then you can go and you can turn on the print resolution checkbox and you can set your print resolution there. And as Lightroom prints this photo, it's then going to upsize the photo to 240 pixels per inch using the technology that we saw before. So it'll do just a fine job at it. I use 240 as a high end. I don't ever go to 300. I know some people are taught to go to 300. Again, I say this with everything, do your own tests and see. There's, there's no better way to figure this stuff out is it 240, is it 300, than to do your own tests. And I've done mine, which is where I know 240 is plenty for anything that I would need, okay? So from there, you can go ahead and send this off to your printer. As I mentioned, if you're gonna be saving it as a JPEG, then all you would have to do is go under the export menu and set the size to whatever it is you wanted and uh, that'll take care of it for you. Uh, I mentioned earlier that there are plugins that do this stuff. So the 
there's going to be two types of people that watch this video. Type number one is going to be like, hey, Matt, I trust you. I'm good. I'm just going to use Adobe for this stuff. And good. That, that's really the reason why I wanted to do this video. Um, type number two is going to be somebody that is a little bit more techy and you want to try it out for yourself. So I would encourage you, all these plugins have uh, free trials and overlay them in Photoshop and all that stuff, do what I did. But in addition to pixel peeping, what I would really encourage you to do is to make it a real world trial. Okay. And that would mean most of the time we're doing this upsizing for printing, print out both different versions. You know, if you're seeing a difference, print them both out, pin them up on the wall, stand a couple feet back, make this real world. All right. And can you see the difference? If you can, then of course, maybe it is worth that time, effort, hassle to, to jump to another program. But if you can't, then I would say consider that you've already got some really excellent technology built right into the programs that you already use.